welcome back to another episode of Debt Collection 101. I'm Ashley. I also have Brittany co-hosting with me today. And we have our two-time guest, and he's back again on the topic of using social media to improve brand presence. And we have Sean Williams with Williams Rush and Associates from Dallas. Thank you again so much for joining us. Um, and I'm really excited to dive into this topic. And I see your posts on LinkedIn and I see you guys are very invested in LinkedIn. Um, so just kind of diving right into it and just why did you initially decide to build a presence on social media for Williams and Rush? Okay. Um, first of all, good morning, everybody. It's still morning here. Well, actually it's noon, so it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, just I, it wasn't until recently that we kind of realized how important social media was from a business standpoint, because we really never thought that, you know, with the industry that we're in collections, you know, we didn't see the connection, you know, because, you know, most of the people, the consumers that we're calling, they're not going to social media to connect with us or anything like that. But, you know, um, our IT company, Green Bean, they pointed out LinkedIn, you know, they put LinkedIn on our on our, uh, you know, in front of us and kind of told us, you know, the importance of kind of having a decent pre presence on LinkedIn and, and whatnot. So they started helping us develop, a, you know, our, our branding is what they called it, you know, our branding. Cause I, you know, for the first seven or eight years, we never, you know, that wasn't on our radar. So, you know, that's been very helpful. And, you know, and on, on top of that, social media is free, you know, it's even better. You know, because it's, it, it's a way to get some exposure, you know, for your brand, your company and let people know who you are and what you do, you know, and how your business operates without, you know, having to expend a lot of resources on it, you know, mm -hmm. so we're still working on our on our presence and whatnot, but that's kind of how it started and, you know, kind of where we are presently. Awesome. And just for background, how long... Mm -hmm. Have you guys been open? And then at that, what point did you start getting into LinkedIn? Okay, so we started started the company in 2011. So we've been around for 11 years and time flies, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but 11 years, and it wasn't until I think right before the pandemic. Yeah, so that's, was that 20, 2020? So maybe at the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020, when they kind of put it on our radar and they have a, they have an awesome program, you know, branding uh, program. And we kind of started getting some information from them and um, started building content from there. Cool. <clears throat> That's awesome. And then kind of going off of that. So since being active on social media, how has that really impacted your agency? You know, and from there, how do you measure success or define success? Well, I feel like I feel like we're still in the infancy stages, you know, of our, of our of the branding process for us, because, again, for the first seven, eight, nine years, we weren't you know, that wasn't something that we focused on. You know, that wasn't our core thing here, you know, and it's still not a core thing, but we didn't really see the, the importance of it as far as collections is concerned. So, well, it's given us a lot of exposure, starting with you guys, you know, our buy was our first delve into you know, this type of, uh, you know, this type of thing, you know, um, the first, basically the first video that we, you know, got some exposure with was the one from Arbyte like two years ago. And in how, how it's impacted us, we still get calls, believe it or not. You know, I don't know what the people Google or what it is that that video keeps popping up on YouTube for people, because just a couple months ago, two months ago, you know, I had somebody reach out to me and they say they saw a video on social media, on YouTube, you know, about, you know, um, you know, basically collection stuff. They're trying to start an agency. And I think that was the topic. I think that was the topic of our previous video, you know, so it's given us a lot of exposure. And then again, again, it just kind of opened our eyes. You know, that video kind of opened our eyes on the, the importance of, you know, working on a brand. Yeah, absolutely. I I was just going to say, like how you said, it's still like newer. It's not like your core thing, but, and as you know, I, I you know, there's a lot of agencies um, who don't have any social media presence still. Um, and you just got into it two years ago, realistically. So it's never too late to start doing this. And like you said, it is free. So um, 
yeah, I, I, um, I love that. It's like newer to you. You've been around for a long time in the industry and you just started social media, um, which I feel like is probably the route people should start taking in, in the arm industry. Yes. So one of the things like we still haven't saw the, seen the connection. Cause I look at a lot of people in our industry and they, they have the Facebook, um, um, uh, links on their pages and stuff like that. And we haven't done the Facebook thing. Um, we haven't done Facebook or any of the other social medias. You know, I felt like LinkedIn because it's more, you know, it's professional, you know, and I think, I think it gives us more exposure, more with clients than it does with consumers, you know, and I, I, I think where we're at right now, as far as branding is concerned, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, in the future, you know, I'm sure there's ways, you know, that we haven't even thought of yet that that um, you know, these other companies are getting some value of you know, the Facebook links. I see other companies that have Instagram links on their, you know, their collection agencies. I'm, I, need to, I need to click on one, see where it takes me, <laughs> you know, to see what kind of content you put on your, on your Instagram page or you know, your Facebook page, but um, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're getting some value from that also. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask you if, I know you're predominantly on LinkedIn, but I was gonna ask if you do use any other uh, channels for social media or um, if you would ever consider using other channels in the future which it, it does sound like you want to yeah yeah definitely be willing to use a Facebook or you know I uh, or Instagram and whatnot once we figure out how we can get some value out of that you know on a professional level I have the personal pages but you know as far as the company page um, but I guess maybe just you know, some of the things that I, you know, some of my buddies that have agencies and whatnot, you know, as far as Instagram, they, they do post like company events, you know, you know, when they have company events and whatnot, stuff like that. But, you know, so I guess there's some value there. On yeah. That. I think just showing people like you're real people too. It doesn't always have to, you know, be work related, even though like stuff like that is work related, but a work party, you know, you would, you wouldn't really think like, oh, I should probably post this or something. And, um, but I think that helps like see, seeing you guys like doing normal things and like, not just, this is what we do. Like we're a collection agency. Like this is what we do outside of work and stuff like that. I think is, is cool to see um, people doing that as well. Yes, I agree. I agree. I'm kind of going off of that. Um where right now, where do you get your ideas for your media content? Do you have like a resource or a vendor that you get like recommendations from? Honestly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I keep referring back to Green Bean IT. They do our IT and they do our social media content and whatnot. And they kind of give us, you know, um, kind of an outline of stuff that, um, that would be acceptable and things that um, we could send over them there to them as far as stuff that would go on LinkedIn and give us some, you know, give us some value there. So yeah, we, we're relying on somebody else right now. But, um, you know, it's funny, my daughter is like, dad, just post everything, just post it. You know, people need to see the, kind of exactly what Ashley just said, you know, see the people behind the, you know, the banner sometimes, you know, that kind of gives you, will allow you to get some exposure also, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in your LinkedIn, you guys post a lot of like, uh, consumer, um, like compliments, right? Like I've seen that before that you guys post, which is amazing to see. And I think if consumers were to look you up and saw that, like that is huge for you guys. Right. So yeah, that, those ideas are great. I love that idea. Yeah, that, you know, they kind of, I think they do link some of the, uh, or copy and paste some of the, you know, the Google reviews, but you know, the funny thing, those Google reviews go both ways, you know, but we encourage our consumers, that's actually in our talk off, we can encourage our consumers to give Google reviews, you know, mm -hmm. not good Google reviews, but just Google reviews. We asked them to leave us, you know, honestly, what they felt like the interaction was when dealing with our agency, because I have, a, um, I have a team of people that read all of them, every last one of those reviews, and we use those as ways to improve our customer service. So we feel like we've gotten some benefit, you know, um, out of that. It's something we started, I guess, about maybe two years ago, you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, and um, <clears throat> because that's one of the, I think that's one of the most valuable ways that we can improve our process is getting honest feedback from consumers, and they'll certainly give it to you if you ask. <laughs> 
So <laughs> build them a team. So I, yeah, I love that you have a whole team for that. I've, I've never heard of that before. I think that's really great to like invest the time and strategy to go through that and get some good information back. I say team, we've got two people. <laughs> It's a team. <laughs> it's a team, right? Exactly. It's a team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, oh, side note, um, before I ask the next question, do you guys respond to all Google reviews? I respond to all Google reviews. Nice. Yep. I actually personally respond to every single one of them. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah, we definitely do. Yeah. Good. That's that's great. I I, I had a feeling you did just like knowing you and like your agency and all of that. But I, I feel like I've definitely seen like complaint reviews on Google and they just go unanswered, which I, I personally don't think that helps the company. So I just curious if you, if you did do that and that's, I think that's great too. No, we get, we get notifications anytime we get a review. And I respond. And matter of fact, you have you don't have to respond, but it actually will lower your your Google rating if you don't respond. Mm -hmm. you know, our team told us they said if you leave these, you know, the even not, not even just bad ones, but just um, you know all of them, you know, you mm -hmm. respond, say something to every review that you get, and it helps you keep your rating. So mm -hmm. I respond to every single review that we have, and if it's an issue, you know, that gives us an opportunity to address the issue because a lot of times. There'll be things in our process that we don't even know is a is a um, is an issue for the consumers, but you know when you're asking them to give Google reviews on every call, you know that's part of our talk off. You know you get some pretty good feedback. Yeah. You know, it's not positive, but I feel well. You know what? I feel like it is positive because it gives us opportunities to improve our, you know, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. so they give they definitely give you honest feedback. You know, on these reviews, so that's a good thing. Good. Awesome. Yeah. I love that you guys do that. That's, that's great. Um, so when Reg F came out um, and it stated that agencies can use social media to contact consumers, um, there was a lot of pushback against that collection, having a presence or attempting social media channels. So how do you think debt collection agencies can use social media in a way that establishes, th establishes their brand in a positive way, but also taking into account um, the consumer preference. Hmm. That's mm. a um, personally, we haven't started using social media as a way to reach out to consumers yet because we haven't figured out a responsible way to do that. You know, when I say responsible, what I mean that a way that, um, you know, where people won't be offended by getting, getting a message on their personal um, Instagram account or Facebook account, you know, from a collection agency. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking forward to ACA where I'll be able to go, go out there and, you know, speak to a lot of people in our industry to find out, you know, how they're, you, how, what they're doing, basically. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to ask people, you mm -hmm. know, I've already asked a few people, you know, that, that are in my network, but I'm looking forward. And I'm sure ACA will probably have some um, workshops or at least one workshop that deals with this. But we, I, nothing comes to mind that would make me, <laughs> make me feel like a consumer wouldn't be offended <laughs> and respond accordingly by getting a message from a bill collector on their Facebook page. So at this point, we're not doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, consumer <laughs> preference too. Um, like, I feel like you would still have to like ask them, like, what is your preferred method of communication? If someone does say Facebook, like, you know, then that might be a little easier to reach out to them. Um, but yeah, I, I can definitely see it as like a tricky thing right now. Um, we did a, a survey and someone responded that they would want to be contacted on TikTok. It was like 1%, <laughs> but I, we thought that was funny. We were like, what? Like on TikTok of all places, you want to be contacted there. So yeah, it's a weird world, weird world now that we're getting into with technology. <laughs> you know, the funny thing, when I think of social media and this TikTok doesn't even come <laughs> you know, it doesn't even, hadn't even popped into my head, you know, I can't imagine what are going to leave a video for them, you know, about right. <laughs> you're just so, doing uh, a TikTok dance yeah. and trying to get their money. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, I hadn't even, that hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something, something to think about. Maybe someone in the industry is using TikTok right now. We don't know. We know about it. Okay. Really noted. <laughs> really noted. 
or you guys can come up with the next viral dance while you're, you know, contacting yeah. <laughs> consumers. And we'll either get money or we'll get sued. One of the two, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll get the money or we'll get sued. So, <laughs> yeah. So what would you say to somebody right now who maybe doesn't have any social media presence, um, but maybe they're interested in starting something? What kind of advice would you have for them? I think, you know, one of the things that they're, um, you know, our team was telling us, you know, green, over at Green Bean, they were saying that just just doing simple things, just to, simple, just to start off, you know, like when we have our lunches, we have lunches all the time, you know, you take pictures and whatnot, we take pictures anyway. You take pictures anyway, send a couple to the team and they post them on LinkedIn, you know, and some of the things that we do for the community, you know, we do things in the community here in Dallas, you know, as a, as a team, you know, and um, just little things like that, you know, would be a good start. <clears throat> you don't have, really have to have a content creator, I don't think, to get started on LinkedIn, just to kind of get your name out there as somebody that's socially conscious if you guys are doing things as a, as a um, company for the community, take the pictures and post them. I think that's just kind of what we did and what we're still doing. You know, I don't think you um, have to have a big strategy right off the bat, but you know, some of these free sites, they, they get your name out there in our industry. Um, you know, that's just, there's a lot of value in that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. Well, we, of course, follow you. We love your content. We think you're doing great. That's why we had you on this episode for social media specifically. Um, that's all the questions we had. Um, so thank you again for joining us as a second time guest. Um, it's always great to see you and work with you. So thank you again. Likewise, looking forward to seeing you guys out at ATA, ACA. <laughs> Same. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.